Welcome to my tutorial on creating a multi-version game launcher. So what you will want to have open right now is a new .NET Core WPF app application. And in the XAML file here, in this line, we're going to do resize mode and set that to no resize. And after that, you can design the application however you'd like. But we, you will have to have a button, combo box, and web browser. The web browser is for the update board. The button is for the play, like the play button, and the combo box is for selecting the version. So I'm going to create my application and I will be back. Okay, so I'm finished designing my WPF app. Um, the XAML code will be in the description if you want to follow along with this. So now we're going to go straight into the coding part. So the first things that we will want to do is set up the initialized events. So in the XAML code, we're going to do space for the button and then we're going to type initialize and we're going to do new event handler and we're going to do this for everything also be sure to not um, click on any existing event handlers it might clash with it's going to clash with the script for sure and cause some errors all right so now uh, i like to keep this clean so since the button initialize and the combo box initialize will only be in one line i kind of put it on the same line so what we're going to do now is create uh, public variables. We're gonna create a public button and call this our play button. We're gonna create a public combo box and we're gonna call this our version selector. And we're gonna create a public web browser and we're gonna call this our update board. Now what we're going to do is uh, set the play button and we're going to cast the sender uh, cast the sender into a button and we're going to do the same thing for the rest so we're going to keep the update board like this for the web browser uh, because we will um, set its source while it initializes also don't forget to remove all these unnecessary namespaces we're not going to use any of those all right so we're basically set up now. We're going to create two folders now. This is going to be launcher data, and we're going to create another one called launcher scripts. Oh boy, why, why now? Why now? Why now? Why is Visual Studio crashing? I just want to make two folders, dude. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, Visual Studio just died. All right, so, and we're going to call this launcher scripts. Now we're going to save. Oh, not again. Not again, bro. No, 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 no. Okay, now uh, back to what I was saying. So now we are going to create a new class in our launcher data folder. And this class is going to be called game paths. And this is just going to hold all of the um, paths that we will use. So we do not have to always like run a combine and we will be using system.io for this but that's that's kind of all so yeah i'm gonna make this real quick Okay, so for the executable file, the zip file name, or like the file that you have zipped up in, yeah, it's definitely going to be different from this. This is just an example, but it's probably just going to be build without this, and then test.exe, or like your game, like the game name.exe. This is mainly for demonstration purposes. Alright, so now we have our game path set up, we are going to create another class. And this is going to be called our version manager. Now in our version manager, we're going to make it public. And we're going to create a constructor. 
We're also going to be using a dictionary for this. It's going to be string and string for the key and value. And it's basically the version link pairs. We're also going to reference the main window class in here so we can enable and disable the buttons so they don't so the user doesn't bug it out. So now how this is going to work is the versions.txt file, we are going to format it like this. So we're going to have the version and then space and then the link. So the versions that you have, right now I have 1.0.0, 1.1.0, 1.2.0, etc. So I'm going to do 1.0.0, 1.1.0, 1.2.0, and 1.1.0. The last version and after that we're going to do a space after so we can split the version and the link from each other we are going to go to our google drive i already have everything uploaded all we have to do is get their download links so to do that i will have a link in the description to convert share links to download links so you're going to go right click it share and then i have it set already set to anyone who has the link can view it so make sure to change it to this going to copy the share link and put it in this uh, input to get the download link. And what you're going to do, based on the version that you have it, you're going to do space and then the link. And you're going to do it for all the other files that you have. Okay, I have everything set up now. So what I am going to do now is go back to my drive and I am going to move the versions.txt file into my drive. So now, if we view it, if we preview it, it has our versions and our links. So now what we're going to do is share. We are going to change to anyone with the link. Copy the link. Once again, go to the direct download link generator. Paste it in, grab the link, and we're gonna go back in here and save it as a comment for now. That will be very important for later. So now what we're going to do is create a new web client. So the reason why we're going to use a web client is we are going to download the string from this link so we can split it into our dictionary. So now we're going to do download string completed and we're going to create an event for that and now we're going to do c dot download string asynchronously and new uri and we're going to put in our link don't forget to put brackets around it and uh, the quotation marks now we're going to get rid of this exception and the this um, this class has the result of the downloaded string. So we can save that into another string. And we're going to call this, um, I'm not sure, temp e.result. And now we're going to create a string array. And we're going to call these the version links. And because in our text file, we pressed enter every time uh, we made a a version with its link, we can just do temp.split and then environment.newline. So basically we are getting um, every individual version with its own link. And now what we can do is run a for loop version links link. And what we're going to do is for every version link we have, we're going to split it by the space we have here. So we get the version and the link. So what we're going to do is create another string array in here. And we're going to call this version underscore and then link. And that will basically be version links i dot split and just do a space. Put that there. Now once that is done, we are going to do version link pairs 
dot add, and then we're going to do version underscore link zero, which is the version we have, and then the version underscore link one, which is the link. Now we want to add um, the versions into the combo box. So what we're going to do is, since we have a reference to our window class when we first uh, create a new uh, instance of the version manager, we can easily just do uh, create a new observable collection above our for loop. And we can call this um, uh, versions to display. And don't forget to initialize it with a new instance of itself. It's a generic type. You have to do it for all generic types. And now we are going to do version versions to display dot add and then version underscore link zero. Now, after this for loop is done, we are going to go to our window class, the window class dot version selector dot item source. And we're going to set that to our versions to display. And after that, we're going to do window class dot version selector dot items. And then we're going to refresh it so we can actually see the versions. And that's basically all we really have to do. This is just to set up the combo box so we can have the versions to put into the downloader. But we do not want uh, the user to mess around with it. So to to make this um, more bug free, we can do in, in the constructor window class dot play button dot is enabled equals false and uh, window uh, window class dot version selector dot is enabled to false and once this entire operation is complete, we are going to re-enable them. I really did forget to set those to true. Uh, yeah, set them to true. And there you go. Now in the main window class, we are going to have a private variable of the version manager. And we can call this underscore version manager. And don't forget to import the folder, so launcher.launcher data. And what we're going to do before we, no, actually after we initialize the component, we are going to uh, create a new instance of it. And don't forget to reference this. There. Now, we're basically set up now. And what we have to do is subscribe the methods for when you click the play button so it downloads and when you switch uh, the selection in the combo box. So to do that, we just have to double click the play button Make sure you don't edit the text, and it will auto-generate an event. It also works for the combo box, so you can do that too, to the combo box. And boom, there you go. Now what we're going to do is create a public string, and this will be the version to download. Now to get this, all you have to do is uh, cast the selected item of the combo box into a string, so we can do that quickly. There you go, easy as one line. Now for the button, this is a bit more complicated. So now in the launcher scripts, the script that we have from the GitHub repository, we're now going to put this into the launcher script. Put that in. Now we are going to create an instance of this. So we're gonna create a try catch block in here. We're gonna catch an exception, call it ex. We can't call it e because of the route event args. And we're gonna do a message box dot show. And then we're just going to do ex.toString. Now we're going to do file downloader and we're going to create a new instance of it. New file downloader. Now what we're going to do is downloader dot download file completed. We're going to subscribe this event to a new function. And now we're going to do downloader dot download file. And now we are going to get the link from the dictionary. So in order to do that, we're going to do if and 
And now we're going to have to check the directories. So we can do that in the game paths. We can do... Okay, so that will be initialized. So now we can go back into here. We don't have to worry about the directories in here. So once that is all done, we're going to now unzip the file into the game version file and then run it. So again, we're going to create another try block. Catch the uh, any unhandled exceptions to prevent any crashes. And then we can do message box dot show um, the X dot two string. Now what we're going to do is there and do not forget to import all your libraries now before you run any of this we need to check if the file exists like the 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 build itself exists so we're going to do the file so now to prevent any more bugs what we're going to do when the button is clicked we're going to do play button dot um, is enabled and set that to false and we are going to re-enable it if any exceptions are thrown so the player or not the player the user doesn't interrupt the download process and all that if they were to do that we might download multiple instances of the zip file and the program is going to get confused so we're going to fix that and do the same thing for the version selector Okay, so now we are done. We are now officially done this. Now if you run your application. There. Okay, it re-enabled everything. And as you can see, we have our versions down here. So I'm feeling like the latest version. Let's do 1.3.0. Let's hit play. And boom, there you go. As you can see, it works completely fine. This is version 1.3.0. This is the new hot game that everyone's talking about. In the next uh, part, we are going to talk about creating the update board, which is uh, using HTML and how we can update it without having to have our own domain. So yeah, I'll see you in the next part. We made a fully functional game launcher without an update board.